working on unlocking the secrets of DNA at the same time. Crick and Watson were the first to publish their results and receive public recognition. Understanding DNA has led to a huge increase in our knowledge of how life works. From the intricate patterns of a butterfly's wing to the pelican's dive, DNA provides the blueprint for the development and functioning of all living organisms. DNA is a molecule made up of four chemical bases. Adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine, or A, G, C and T. In many ways, all life on Earth can be described with just four letters. In 1990, the Human Genome Project began. Scientists started to work out the DNA code of human life. It's about three billion bases long. Many thought it was an impossible task, but it was completed in 2001, four years ahead of schedule, thanks to computers like these. One of the most exciting areas of medical research following the unlocking of the human genome is genetic screening, which aims to prevent illnesses before they occur. Here at University College Hospital, Dr. Sandra Anglin is part of an international program to screen all patients for sickle cell thalassemia. They specifically affect the oxygen carrying capacity in the blood and a specific protein called hemoglobin. Genetic screening, unlike screening for specific illnesses, is a screening process whereby we want to identify an unusual gene that you may pass on to your child. In the case of sickle cell and thalassemia, these are specific genes um, that affect the haemoglobin in the blood. In terms of antenatal screening, it's offered as part of routine care, so any pregnant woman that turns up will be offered screening for sickle cell and thalassemia. The normal type of red blood cells are haemoglobin A, and if you're a carrier, you have one gene that makes normal red blood cells and one that makes an unusual type of red blood cells. If both parents are carriers of the gene, their baby has a one in four chance of inheriting a copy of the sickle cell gene. Okay. Nelly went through the process. I was asked to go in um, to check w um, whether I was a carrier or not. And obviously my husband went with me as well, and we went together. And uh, that's when I discovered I was a carrier of the sickle cell disease, and he was a carrier as well. The options that were given to us, one of them was having a termination, and the other obviously was having a baby despite all the risks involved. We decided to go ahead and have a baby despite all the risks. My twin girls do not have sickle cell, perfectly healthy, perfectly normal children. Genetic screening provides us with uniquely personal data about people, and society needs to decide how to use this information. People have concerns that this will result in intolerance to people who choose not to employ the technology and so have children with one of these, or Down syndrome, for example, uh, and this will result in intolerance to people um, with diseases. Uh, and further into the future, the same technology could be used to select out embryos or to select for embryos with certain genetic traits that may predispose them to higher intelligence or less prone to addiction or more prone to addiction, various personality types, physical abilities as well. So it opens the door to the selection uh, or the creation of designer children, children who have certain valued genetic properties. So whether genetic technology causes social harms is really up to us and how we choose to deploy it. 